Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. The framework is the skeleton that holds our machine parts together. It is essential to good web handling as our bones are to our body. I am very excited to continue a new mini-series on framework design and troubleshooting. In this clip, we take a deep dive into some of the more important frame design details. One of the Ten Commandments of Web Machine Design is to avoid excessive roller deflection. This was covered in great detail in our Web 101 class and elsewhere. Bearing position has a huge effect on deflection. While one normally can't put the bearing inboard about 25% of shell width, the optimum position for minimum deflection, you can do the next best thing. That is, to put the bearing housing so close to the head of the roller that it is almost touching. To do this, you must move the frame to the bearing, not the other way around. The second commandment of framework has to do with cantilevering. You have no choice but to cantilever the frame once from the floor. What you want to do is to avoid a second cantilever from that frame. If a cantilever is required, you can always add a welded gusset as one way to minimize the flimsiness of cantilevering. Bolts are complicated. While they seldom break, they often break loose. In a previous blog post or Web 201 clip, I forget which, I listed some of the many options for keeping bolts tight. Still, proper wiring, such as taught to aircraft mechanics, is about the only way that never fails. In this clip, we focus on stiffness or resistance to deflection. Here, translations are not the issue. Rather, Bolted joints have been found to be midway between a ball and socket and a fixed node with regard to rotation. Weldments can be potentially much stiffer. So the first idea is to reduce the number of bolted joints between the floor and the roller. The second is that a bolted joint near the floor is far worse than the same joint higher up. Side or cross direction loads are usually much smaller. Still, they are not zero. Shear stiffness is very difficult to obtain without a diagonal. The beam shown here would do little unless it was a very tall weldment or a very, very tall bolted joint. Beam bending is bad enough. To add wall bending to that just adds insult to injury. Shown here is just one of uncountable ways to attach to a beam that puts the wall in thin plate bending. Many people misunderstand frames and foundation. Strength is seldom the issue. It is stiffness. A stiff enough frame may need to have spring rates of 1, 10, or even 100 million pounds per inch at key attachment points such as rollers and foundations, especially on larger machines. While history might be a guide, it does not allow for improvement or improvisation. Overdesign is another method. However, it is really not so much about metal, it is about how wisely you use it. To really understand frames, you need to do structural analysis called finite element modeling. To verify those models, you can apply loads in the field and measure the displacements with a dial indicator.
There are many other things that you need to know about frames. We can only list a few of those things here. You should know to avoid putting torsion on any open section, such as a channel or I-beam. However, stiffness is not the only frame requirement. You must also consider serviceability and operatability and safety. You should consider whether to route hoses, tubes, and wires inside or outside of the frame. And this is a trade-off between accessibility and reliability. There are many machining and assembly and alignment considerations with regard to frames. Please understand that not only are foundations in continuous motion due to the liquid-like behavior of many soils, metal can also move. Creep is one way, though not likely big enough except on the journals of large rollers. Another is due to stress relaxation. Machining, and particular welding, put stresses into the metal. If you don't relieve those in the shop with heat or vibration, it will be relieved on the factory floor over time. This means that the frame will move after you've aligned it during installation. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will describe bearing mounting practices. Be sure to like and share. See you next time.